Hey YouTubers, welcome to another episode of Bow Hunter Die. It is mid July and food plot madness is going crazy right now for our fall plot. I'd say it's late July. Late but July. as you guys can see, Todd is not here this week. It's kind of relaxing. I am the not pressure Todd. is off. We don't have to perform. We got Tommy Alford here in the studio. But as he said, late July, which means food plot season is right now or right around the corner, depending on where you guys live. It is time to start getting those brassicas in the ground. If you guys haven't checked out Heartland Wildlife, Rack Maker Brassicas, definitely do it. They've been working awesome for our team. So guys, we want to know what you're planning and where you're at and when you're planning it. So leave your comments below. Hopefully you can teach Tommy and I a few things about uh, planning some food plots. Everybody, welcome to another awesome episode of Bow Hunter Die. As you can see, Mr. Graff is not here this week. He's actually on a little family vacation. So we got Tom Alford, the big buck killer, here in the <laughs> office, standing in for Todd. Actually, you didn't kill a buck last year. Neither did Todd. No, well, Todd I didn't. Todd did kill one in Wisconsin. So yeah, we actually one shot one, one together. So, well, he shot one. I filmed oh, it. Oh, you did film it. And oh, then, and then the season close. went downhill from it there, all unfortunately. From there. So, <laughs> guys, it is midsummer. Uh, August is right around the corner. So we've got some really good off-season updates, you know, from the team uh, coming at you right now. Tommy, first up, me and you yep. out at the lease. What are we going to be seeing? Uh, well, kind of a neat little episode. Did a little mega mega mowing out there and uh, created a new spot for a fall plot that we're going to plant some oats, winter rye, and winter wheat in, and, brassicas. Um, and some brassicas. Sort of an experimental plot, but uh, so. cool. Uh, well, guys, a neat we're going to give you the late season update. Quit talking. Let's get into the show now. All right, guys, it's late July. We're out here at our lease, and we're going to give you guys a quick food plot update. As you can see, I'm standing in the soybean plot that Tom Alford put in with Matt Miller's help a couple months ago. It's looking awesome. We've decided not to spray this plot today. This is Roundup Ready Beans, but honestly, there's not enough weeds in here to really be doing a whole lot of damage at this point. The deer are actually eating the weeds as much as they're eating uh, the beans. So we're going to go ahead and just leave this plot alone and uh, probably get out of this particular area. We got another plot that we want to spray to the north of here that's going to be more of a fall plot, so like a brassica oats type plot. And then we're going to check some cameras we got two bucks that we're looking for jimmy dean and tommy boy we're going to see if they are out here anywhere as the season closes in so let's get to work okay so this area that we're standing in we actually kind of discovered last year one it was right after justin shot tommy boy and he bedded over here and then the second time i came back and i saw him bedded over here and he let me walk right by him but anyway what they're doing is they're bedding over there in the super thick stuff and then coming through and making their way to that cornfield or that bean field over there so a couple weeks ago, I came in here and mega mowed all this down with the intentions of probably putting a tree stand in one of these Austrian pines here. So anyway, we're just monitoring it right now. I'm gonna change the card out and see what we've got. He might not be bedding there right now, but he will come fall. One of these trees here behind me is kind of like what I was thinking as far as a stand. And on a north wind, or even on a west wind, where they bed is back there. And we're finding that these bucks are using kind of like the same beds. So they can angle into the wind going to the destination fields that way. So they have the wind at their advantage until they get right here. And then we slip them an arrow. That's the plan. One and a half year old mega giant now for a look. That one's right up your alley, buddy. He's in, got in one more year. He's got two antlers. He's a shooter. Oh, there's another one with him. Oh, what did I tell you? And where's he coming from? He's coming from right there, Tommy Boy, Tommy walking Boy. right through here. This is what this he does. Is... He goes right through here. And I cleared it all out so we can shoot in all there these he different is. spots. We'll give you hopefully a better look at him. That's see? Tommy Boy. If you could see his leg right here, that's where my arrow hit him. That's not where <laughs> you want to shoot him in order to kill them properly. That was the 18th. 
He's got a little bit more mass than last year, but that's about it. No drop time growing off? No, unfortunately that... not. No, no droppers. But hey, he's still so alive. That's, that's yeah, one of that's, the two bucks that, we we're looking hopefully for. Hopefully he's staying in that little area over there. All right, well, we're back in the big plot here. Uh, as you can see, I've got the moose utility sprayer on here with the six foot boom filled up with about 30 gallons full of uh, Roundup. And it's kind of nice now that all the green grass has popped through, all that new growth. So we're going to go ahead and kill it and hopefully let all this stuff, uh, all this poison absorb on here. And then once it's dead, we'll come back, till it, and plant it. Right, guys well Tommy is out spraying the food plot behind us is the tree where we want to put a stand we're not actually hanging any stands today but I do want to start kind of trimming this tree out to get ready so we're gonna break out the new wicked beast this is a pretty awesome handsaw it's got a super long blade it's great for this you know off-season type trimming uh, where you're not really worried about having a nice compact folding saw to carry in your pack like you would be during the season but you know one thing I want to talk about a little bit is you know tree stand placement not just in general like where which tree you're gonna put it in but where you're gonna put it in the tree what I like to do is get down on the ground, figure out where my shots are gonna be most likely at, figure out where I wanna put the stand in the tree before I even do anything. Where I wanna put the stand in the tree and which direction I want it to face is gonna dictate which side of the tree I put my climbing sticks on, which side of the tree that I approach it on, and in this particular case, where I go in and I actually cut myself a little trail to get into the tree. So with this particular stand, knowing that the food plot is out that direction, I'm gonna kinda of wanna face that way, unfortunately, this tree's got a, a V in the top of it that's not going to allow me to face directly into the plot. So I'm probably going to be facing more, uh, I guess this is going to be kind of northeast into this area right here. So I want to come up, usually in my case, I like to come up on the left-hand side of my stand, which means I'm going to cut a trail right in here behind me into the tree. I'm going to climb up and then face it that way. So I like to do a lot of planning. It doesn't always pay off, but it makes me feel good anyway. So let's go cut this stuff down. Basically what I'm doing at this point is I want to figure out where my climbing sticks are going to be. When you get into these pine trees, a lot of times you don't need a lot of climbing sticks to get up these things because you can use the branches that are on here. So looks like I'm going to have a good opportunity to go right up basically the side of this tree and then climb into my stand on that side. So realistically all I want to do is chop down some of this brush that's pretty much just right here in front of the stand. Tommy did a halfway decent job of clearing it out for me already but certainly can't hurt to make it a little bit nicer quieter and easy to get in here. The other thing too, I've hunted with a lot of people over the years and I find the mistakes that they make is generally when we're climbing up these trees, we've got backpacks on. Sometimes I've got my bow strapped into my back, my backpack. Uh, a lot of guys don't trim out behind them they just trim out like the area right up the tree and if you guys have ever been like halfway up a tree and your backpack gets stuck in a branch and you can't get any farther it's really annoying so a uh, helpful tip always clear out enough room for you your gut and your backpack to get up the tree quietly all right well here we are guys we are in one of our food plots it's a clover chicory plot but the stand behind me is a stand we refer to as the tree of tears both tommy and myself uh, shot bucks out of that stand last year that were not recovered and when you ever say to yourself uh, you know I wish a deer would just like walk into a food plot and stand 14 12 10 yards in front of me in the wide open uh, that's what happened to me last year and unfortunately I botched the shot so stand is right there uh, mostly just checking on the food plot right now like I said it's clover chicory and some alfalfa you know half of this plot looks really good the other half yeah, it's not the greatest, but man, we got pretty rough soil conditions in here. This was never meant to be a destination spot. This is more of a pass through as the deer come from the bedding to the south, try to go to the food to the north. So it did its job last year for us. We're crossing our fingers. It does its job again. We're going to check the stand just to make sure everything looks good and we're going to get out of here. All right, well, this is going to be the last update for today. We are at a stand that I call the Oak Tree Stand. This is my personal favorite stand on this particular property. Uh, basically, what we've got here is destination food to the west. We've got bedding to the east, and we're trying to catch them as they transition between the two here. 
The reason they like this particular spot in the field is it's the lowest spot in the field where the deer can actually get out there and not be seen from the road. Where we live in the suburbs here, uh, the deer really don't like to come out into the fields during the daylight because so many people can see them, especially the big bucks. So having this low spot here is a nice little safety area for these deer. Uh, traditionally, there's a scrape underneath this tree every year. You know, two years ago uh, when we first started hunting this property, uh, I barely missed Jimmy Dean out of the stand. I got video of him uh, one evening underneath this scrape when I had hunted that stand in the morning. It was in early November. So just missed him last year, or two years ago, I should say. Last year I had an encounter uh, out of this stand with a deer we called Devil Deer. Didn't really get much footage of him, but it was right up here on this hill. Tommy came in here and we killed all this off. Matt rototilled it and we planted it with Heartland Wildlife Rackmaker Plus, which is essentially alfalfa, clover, and chicory. It's coming up really well, but unfortunately it's got a lot of weeds in it. It's got a lot of grass. So this definitely needs to be mowed in the next week or two. We'll see how it does after that, decide if we're gonna come uh, put any herbicide on it that only kills the grass and not the rest of the broadleaf stuff. But overall, it's looking pretty good. Uh, just gotta wait for season, man. Stand is ready to go. Food plots are coming along. We have at least one hit list buck on camera with Tommy Boy. Jimmy Dean is still a no-show, but we've got a lot of really cool videos of some younger bucks in here. And actually we, we captured some grunting, some summertime grunting on one of the DS4Ks, which is pretty cool. So that is the update for today. We will check in with you guys in a couple of weeks, see how these food plots are doing. Hopefully we have some bigger bucks that uh, show up on the trail, trail camera. So until next time, go on or die. All right, guys. Well, that is Tommy and my update for this summer. Uh, as you can see, we've been out putting in a lot of work trying to, you know, put some more food on that particular farm to try to hold some of these bucks later in the year. Tommy and I both had opportunities at, at four-year-old deer last year out of the same stand, coincidentally enough, um, and just couldn't, you know, make it happen. You know, I think the both the same thing really happened in both cases, which we, we just rushed. Um, you know, sometimes we could sit here and we could talk about it all we want. We can have phone calls, text messages, emails, you could watch shows and people tell you, you gotta be calm, you gotta be calm, you know, just go through this progression in your shot. And, you know, there's times when, when you go from like, when you have no warning sometimes yeah. and you go from like zero to all of a sudden there's a deer on you and you're worried about camera equipment and framing and everything else, you know, sometimes. And he's running in right at you and you're yeah. just, you're sitting back relaxing and just enjoying mother nature and bam, here he comes. It's the yeah. rut and he's running. You yeah. Know? And I sometimes mean, the, the, all that other stuff takes over your decision making. And, and, you know, in my case, I just made a bad shot. In your case, you probably took a shot that wasn't the best, you know, I guess maybe walk us through that, that yeah. hunt just a yeah. little bit. Cause you know, we didn't use it on the show last year. Uh, people haven't seen the full thing, so just kind of walk us through from the time you saw that deer and what happened. Yeah, I mean, basically when he started coming in, you know, unfortunately he was running right at me the whole time for the most part, and he starts to angle and kind of go to my downwind side, and the biggest mistake I made was I shouldn't have stopped to grunt him where I did. I just felt like I was going to lose him, but in reality, the doe had gone the other direction and he probably would have ended up turning and going back anyway once he lost sure. interest of that sound because I had called to him. So, you know. But hindsight, as they say, yeah, is always 2020. I mean, you, you and, when you grunt, and when I grunted, you know, those extra two steps made it even worse, which I should have just let the bow down as soon sure. as he did that. And that's what I was about to say is, you know, we can talk all day about how when the shot's not right, you should let it down. And you should. I mean, th there's a lesson to be learned here for sure. If the shot isn't right, don't try to force it. You know, luckily in this particular case, um, the deer survived. Yeah. You know, that's a shot. I didn't think the deer was gonna live. I thought we'd find him a day, two days, a month later, um, but he survived all the way through. He is looking really good. We got some springtime pictures of him, uh, early antler growth. We haven't gotten any recent trail camera pictures of him. I don't know if he's avoiding the cameras or what's going on, but Tommy and Matt have actually seen him on the hoof a couple of times yep. now. He's looking good. No, he's you looking say? good. He's looking healthy. He's still a big 10 pointer. So um, we'll, we'll yeah. see if he still sticks around for this fall. So we got a couple hit list deer on that particular farm. Tommy and I are both hunting some other farms as well. We'll bring you updates on those later uh, this summer. So next up, we're going to join Clinton Fawcett and Neil McCullough and just try to get a couple updates on what they've been up to this summer. All right, well, good morning, guys. About eight miles in, out of the bike ride this morning. I'm gonna cut it a little short because I'm running late trying to film. Uh, so I give you guys a quick update of what I've been up to. 
Haven't been doing much deer hunting stuff this summer, uh, truthfully. Kind of behind the ball after the kids have got done playing sports, um, softball and baseball. Uh, just haven't been doing a lot, you know. After I uh, shot that giant deer at the end of the year last year, made a bad shot, it kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, ruined my attitude and uh, failings always suck. So I haven't done a lot. Mowed a little bit of clover. Uh, and I most have been riding this bike and shooting my bow. You know, as I was riding this morning, I was kind of thinking about it. I think I've been riding this bike and shooting my bow as much just purely out of, of fear. Um, you know, fear of failing again when it comes time and the moment of truth to shoot a, a big deer if it happens again. And uh, Emily and I is getting ready to have another child. She's due September 11th. And, uh, you know, after Sawyer passed away, uh, it was a lot for us to get pregnant again and, and give it a try. And uh, sometimes that's scary. And uh, maybe that's okay, maybe it isn't. But I've been doing a lot of pointless tasks to kind of work through that, like riding this bike. So uh, I've been trying to get in, you know, 8 to 10 miles, sometimes 12 every morning before work. Then I do 30 on Sundays, um, ride Monday through Friday. So, and shoot my blur day. My goal originally was to get 1,000 miles on my bike in this summer and 2,000 uh, with the bow, 2,000 shots. So I don't think the biking's probably gonna happen because it's just getting daylight too late in the morning, I'm not gonna make it to work. And I'm gonna have to start working earlier hours in a few weeks because I coach junior high football and that's gonna really start. So as far as the deer hunting goes, uh, I have been doing some mowing. I feel like that's something that's overlooked, um, you know, that can lead to good success. The path of least resistance is most of the time where those deer will go. And if you can get them trained in the summer, um, you can keep them on them patterns for early season. Now, whether that's in through your switch grass or um, logging roads. Uh, last night I went down in our main sanctuary and you can see it's just thicker than thick. I mean, it's crazy thick down there, but it's a nice road that leads out into a food plot. We've had great luck down there. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I'm trying to get done. Uh, but other than that, man, went on vacation to Wyoming, took the kids, went out and seen Dustin. Had a beautiful time up in the mountains. It's nice to be able to get away and, uh, you know, just let your mind go and not focus on a lot of the problems that you've had or have or stuff you're trying to do. And I've uh, been fishing a lot. Herman come down last weekend. We had a great time as always. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, it, it is impossible in life to have a bad time with Johnny Herman. So other than that, man, I'm just gonna keep shooting my bow. And I feel like if I get myself mentally prepared for the moment under pressure, um, that I'll have a better deer season. I'm, I'm set up good enough to not worry about hunting every day. Um, I mean, I still think about it and I got it figured out in my head, but just trying to work through these things with the baby coming and uh, getting older in life and busier with the kids. Uh, I just feel like that's what I need to be doing is preparing myself for the moment, not preparing the moment, I guess. If it happens, it happens. I'm not gonna work that hard at it this year because I just need to get my mind straight. So anyway, I'm gonna get home, get my bow shot, continue shooting. Um, you know, I guess to the bow, Frank McDonough helped us out at the bow hunter die get together on shooting, changed my form, changed my draw length. It's helped significantly. Um, I've been shooting back at uh, 60 and 70 yards all the time. Not that I'm gonna shoot a deer that far, Justin's are, but you know, that's where they told me to practice. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, groups have gotten better, went to a uh, trigger release, finger release, kind of changed my form up just so it felt different than the thumb release did. And uh, that's about it. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get this bike home. And uh, till next time I see ya, bow hunter die. Heartland Wildlife Institute has the tools you need to attract, grow, and hold bigger deer. Visit our website at heartlandwildlife.com and put the power of Heartland to work for you. Enjoy free shipping on your next order at heartlandwildlife.com. All right, well, it is the middle of summer and I am working and actually just finished up a, a deer mount project. I have been trying to convince my wife for years to allow um, uh, me to put a deer up in the living room and she, she's basically resisted um, up, until, up until now. She, she's not a big fan of uh, a full head mount or any kind of skull or any that kind of thing, um, but I was able to convince her to do um, kind of a simple skull cap on a, on a uh, mounted onto a piece of wood. 
And uh, today I wanted to kind of walk you guys through the process of how which I did this. It's relatively inexpensive and pretty easy process to do. And um, in my case, it allows me to share my buck prominently in my house um, with, uh, with the approval of my wife and kind of a, a more simpler view. So anyways, uh, this is a buck I called, uh, I called Sloth. I shot him last November. Um, I had actually targeted this buck. I got some photos of him in October and, and had one encounter and saw him. And he has this really unique kind of little drop tine here that uh, sticks off the side. Actually, technically two. He had an injured back leg and um, that caused his, uh, his antler to kind of be uh, malformed on this side. Really a unique buck with tons of character. He's not going to, he doesn't score out of this world at all. He's probably just over a, maybe 100, 110 inches. But an absolute beautiful bruiser buck. It was a great morning, cold November classic hunt. And um, yeah, I was, I was really, really excited to get this buck. Um, but given that, and given that I didn't want to necessarily do a full head mount, I started to um, think about ways to creatively display this guy without um, doing a full head or European or anything like that. So what effectively I ended up doing was kind of a, uh, like a, really it's just called a skull cap. So um, with the Sawzall, I cut just basically the cap of the skull, making sure it was ni nice and flat and flush and um, got rid of the skin and the hair and everything off of this. And, um, and then the, the, the main part of the process is really just a couple steps. So the first thing that I needed to do was to get it clean and to get it sort of bleached out white. And so what I used there was kind of a three-part solution of borax, uh, a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide, and some bleach cleaning agent. And um, basically just in a plastic cup, mixed the solution together until it kind of formed into uh, a little bit of a paste and, and basically dab that in and, and spread that all around on all sides of the, um, of the, the skull, trying to make sure uh, or making sure that I didn't get it anywhere on any of the antler, of course, because I like that kind of stained chocolate color um, at the bases of the antlers. Um, I actually had to do it two times to really get it the, as clean and as, as colored as I want. There's a lot of different ways to bleach out the top. Um, of course, this is just the way that I did. I kind of like the paste, um, so I didn't have to worry about it soaking in bleach or soaking in um, any kind of solution. So the, the paste for me worked really well. Um, from there, I had to figure out a way to actually mount the, the skull cap to the, to the wood. Now, the, there's not a lot of surface area to connect to. Um, so what I discovered is using this uh, two-part epoxy uh, that you can get online. It's, it's um, relatively inexpensive, about 15 bucks. And you mix it together and then using a, um, using a screw, I put a screw in on either side to give it something for the, the epoxy to stick to it. And it, sti and it ends up rock solid like concrete. And I mixed it together. Um, the, the two things kind of kneaded it together and then basically worked it into the skull and shaped it so it's as flat and flush as I possibly could. Um, from there, I had to let it dry for 24 hours and then using just a little bit of um, real rough sandpaper I was able to sand it and get it basically flush and flat. And then I had a nice good surface on the back really to work with. So um, from there I took a simple piece of wood. Um, this is nothing more than an aspen tree that uh, we cut about an inch thick. And on, on either side of it we, we wanted to make sure it was cut really nice and flat. And you, you could, you know, really pick any species of wood, but I, we picked one that was relatively small and um, kind of had some nice character around the edges. And on the back, it's not, we took a uh, picture frame uh, mounting bracket and drilled a couple of pilot holes and then basically screwed that in there. And then underneath, I just drew or drilled a few countersink holes um, so that the nail could, could uh, or sorry, the screw that we put in the wall could could get hooked down there and it's really a rough cut I mean this is not we're not um, trying to be perfect by any means but it, it um, kind of works for the, the purposes of hanging this thing and I like little uh, the the size of this being small it makes the whole thing a little bit lighter a little bit easier to hang so um, that's just something that I tried and then from there um, the last step now that you got um, both the uh, uh, the epoxy and everything hooked up uh, and um, and the piece to mount it to you simply drill a pilot hole I put a screw in straight into the back 
and then uh, with a little bit of Gorilla Glue I was able to hook this directly to it. And the most important thing is there's no screws or nothing visible here on the front and it really gives a nice clean kind of looking finish. So it really ended up um, looking perfect and um, kind of achieving the exact purpose that I wanted it to do. So. Uh, next time you shoot a buck that maybe uh, is not one you necessarily want to do a full mount on or one that you necessarily uh, want to do um, like a, a skull mount or something like that, this is a good solution, a good option for you. Um, something to try that, that, that we've done that actually turned out pretty well. It mounts easy and um, I think I'll, I'll be trying this again for the next one. So that's an update for me. Hope your summers are going well and hope you guys learned a little bit and maybe We'll try this project uh, on your next on your next buck. So, bow hunter die. You know, I think the thing to take away from Clinton's segment is that you know over the years he's been hunting the same farms for a long time, and I think he's proven to all of us that he's a good hunter and he knows yeah. what the deer are going to do, where to hunt, and when to hunt. So it's you know it's kind of nice to see that he's backed off maybe a little bit of the deer preparation for that hunt part and been focusing a little bit more on you know, physical fitness, shooting his bow, and some of these things that are gonna help him be a better hunter than he is, yeah. outside of just putting himself in the right spot at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, good for Clinton doing a little exercise, getting out there being, you know, 5 a.m. in the morning, watching the sunrise, biking. I, I mean, know. that's great. I mean, Clinton it's, has it's, inspired me to start working yeah. out in the morning, so now I text him at 5.30 in the morning when I'm at the gym. So, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's refreshing to see, I guess, you know, when somebody can realize that, you know, they need to work on something like, you know, becoming a better archer and then actually have the dedication to, to follow through with it. So, you know, congrats to Clinton. They got another baby on the way, so good for them. Uh, that's coming in September. It should make for an interesting hunting season. As for Neil, you know, cool segment. Yeah, absolutely. But come on, man. Wife won't let you hang a deer in the house? I mean... That's a tough one, man. I mean, I don't know. I, household. I think we know. It, it actually took me like three or four years to convince my wife to put him in the house. Like, what if you just put it up on the wall? You think she's going to go take it down? She's yeah. Gonna divorce you? Going to get divorced? No. So we, we compromised on a man cave. I took the kid's playroom and turned it into the man cave where I could enclose all my deer heads. What if you wanted to put one in the living room? Are you in the Neil spot? I, I guess it would have to be like I, I guess it would have to be like a really cool pedestal mount, and it'd have to look like Rudolph during Christmas and Christmas. No, I don't know. I don't think poor it would life work. decisions on all on all accounts over here. Some girls, <laughs> some girls hang. just don't like them. They just don't like them, which I think they're like the greatest things ever. But maybe me and you should have buried each other. <laughs> we could put deer heads everywhere. <laughs> so uh, thanks to Clinton and Neil for sending those segments in, guys. Next up, we're going to give you an exclusive look at the brand new. Hunter Safety System Pro Series Harness. These things literally just hit the market in the last couple of days. We got one here at the office, so let's take a look at it. Originally released back in 2005, the HSS Pro Series Vest was kind of the de facto standard for, I don't know, five or 10 years out there when it came to safety harnesses. It really was the original harness that like everybody owned and that they loved. Well, over the years, you know, people wanted something that was a little bit lighter, had some more features. So HSS changed their line, came out with some of the newer vests, like the Elite Series that I've been wearing for the last couple years. And I love, by the way, but everybody was always asking, when is the Pro Series vest gonna come back? There's a lot of guys out there that just loved it. So if you're one of those guys, your prayers have been answered. For 2018, Hunter Safety System is re-releasing the Pro Series vest. So we just got this one here at the office the other day. It is brand new, hot off the presses. We're gonna open it up for the first time, take a look at it. Whoa, we're actually opening it up right now. That was pretty easy. I did cut the tape off of it earlier to make it easier for the video. So let's look at the thing opened up. So uh, first thing I'm gonna see when we open it up is we've got a couple straps in here. Uh, I believe one of these two is the tree strap that would go around the tree if you're not using a lifeline, which you should just be using a lifeline anyways. The other one is gonna be a lineman's belt if you're gonna use this while you're hanging tree stands. So we've got a couple accessories, uh, and then it looks like we've got some instructions and the harness itself. Now guys, one of the biggest improvements they made to this harness from the previous version is they made it a lot lighter weight. This harness weighs less than three pounds. It's 2.9 pounds, so just a tick under three, but when you take it out, like you could feel there's, there's not a whole lot to it. That was always one of the bigger complaints about the old harness was that it was too heavy. Um, 
So as you guys can see, I'm going to go ahead and put it on. Uh, this is the large XL size. Uh, I'm a touch under 200 pounds these days. Fits me pretty well. It's also available in a 2X and 3X size or a small medium size as well. So as you guys can see, it's got a single waist strap here. Obviously, it's got the leg straps, which you can't see right now. Uh, this particular harness has eight pockets on it, I believe. One of the features that I'm most excited about is actually the zippered pockets. It's got one on either side. If you're anything like me, you leave a lot of gear inside your harness that you don't want to get lost as you're walking to or from your stand or whether you throw this thing in your truck or a tote. Uh, I usually leave, uh, for example, my thumb trigger release, I leave in my harness at all times when I'm not hunting. It's nice to be able to just put it in a zippered pocket, know you're not going to lose it. It's also got some pockets around the waist. Uh, these ones are not zippered, but there's plenty of pockets in here. You've got, you know, a pocket you could put some hand warmers in. You've got some pockets on the front here that do have kind of a flap that encloses them. So you could leave a grunt call or something in there and not really worry about it falling out. And then a couple extra pockets back here on the sides as well. Now, one of the most talked about features of this particular harness, uh, judging by last year's ATA show when they first announced it, was this thing right here, which is essentially a port that you can use to charge your cell phone or any other small device while you're out in the woods. Now, the way this thing's designed to work is you would get a portable power bank like this one from Dark Energy. You unzip the right-hand zippered pocket and you've got this cord right here. This cord is going to plug into your charger and then you're gonna fold this whole thing up and put it back inside the, the vest, right? So this whole thing is gonna be concealed inside your vest, right? Now you're going to have a separate cord that you would have to bring with you or provide and you're going to plug it into this power port right here just like so and now this cord can be used to charge your phone and as you can see due to the placement of it it just drops right into this pocket here so you've got your phone at easy access all the time and i know a lot of people are going to say just leave your phone at home while you're hunting but how are you going to watch bow hunter die when you're in the stand if you don't have your phone with you or text your buddies or check in with the wife or do any of the other million things we all do on our phones these days so if you've got a phone with you especially when it's cold out these power packs really come in handy so kind of a neat feature you don't have to use it if you don't want to if you're an anti-technology guy but something that i'll definitely be using this year uh, guys, this particular harness that I've got on right now is in the new Realtree Edge pattern. Uh, it's also available in Mossy Oak Original Bottomland as well, so available in a couple different camo patterns depending on what you like. As I mentioned, it's 2.9 pounds. It's got eight pockets, zippered pockets, available in a variety of different sizes. It is available now. They are in stock and shipping today. So guys, if you are in the market for a new safety harness, make sure you check out the Hunter Safety System Pro Series vests, brand new for 2018. All right, well, if you guys are in the market for a new safety harness this fall, make sure you check out the HSS Pro Series vest. And if you don't wear a safety harness, for the love of God, go get one. What are you thinking? Uh, so Tommy, next up, we've got trophy photos for this week's show. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Are you gonna be a better pronunciator, is that a word, than Todd? Ooh, I don't know, give me these. Better reader, ones. let's say a better reader. So let's jump into these now. Kerry McLean. Chris May. Jacob Horning. Josh Anderson. Kevin Watson. And Stefan Swainpole. Hey, congratulations, everybody. Those are some great trophies. Thanks for sending the photos in. Alfred, who is the winner? Well, this week we're going to go with Kevin Watson from New Zealand on that nice fallow deer. Great picture. Yeah. Great bow. And that's our first fallow deer winner, I yeah. think. Great framing, though. Good it looks job. very happy. I wonder how fallow deer tastes. If anybody's got any fallow deer meat, send it on over to the office. Me and Tommy will cook it up and eat it, let you know how it looks. So, guys, thanks again for sending in uh, all the trophy photos. Remember, if you want to see yourself right here in an episode of Bowhunter Die, you can go to bowhunting.com, click on submit your trophy. You can email them to info at bowhunting.com or just post them on social media, hashtag Bowhunter Die. Don't forget, the winner gets a Bowhunter Die hat and a gift pack from Pine Ridge Archery. And speaking of bow hunter die hats, we do have new hats now in stock. And by the time this airs, Brad and Brando better do their job and get these things on the website. So we got brand new hats. We got another style coming in in the next couple weeks. We'll work on a few more before the fall and before the Christmas rush comes. So make sure you check out bowhunting.com forward slash gear. 
for all the greatest bow hunter die and bowhunting.com equipment, I guess you would say. So Tommy, that's all we got, dude. Yeah. It is late July. The bucks are fully grown. I know, it's Just about exciting. at this point, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I mean, I think we've got a lot of good bucks to shoot at this year. To, to shoot at. To shoot at this year. <laughs> a couple <laughs> different farms. Uh, no, I'm excited. I think we've got a good, a lot of good things in place at our, our main farm. And uh, yeah. I'm super excited. Shaping up to be a good fall. Unfortunately, yeah. it's been a bad summer for trail cameras for us. We don't really have a lot of big deer on no, our cameras it's been slow. Yet. but we know they're out there they're going to show up sooner or later so guys we appreciate you tuning in check back in two weeks todd will be back co-hosting with me thanks to tommy for standing in and we will see you next time right here on bowhunter dive for more exciting action be sure to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world be sure to share your photos stories and experiences as well and don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. I shower twice a day, but I don't use deodorant. I stink about the right now. Why? Are you like worried about yeah, something? I don't really like deodorant. El Natural. Any reason? I'll start putting scent wafers in my <laughs> armpits. Any, any, any reason? Come deer season. I, I've just never wore deodorant my whole life. No, if you, you know what I do with Tinks? I do wear the dead what? down wind. Tinks no, I wear the 69 dead, under I your arms? I wear the dead down wind stuff. Why? He doesn't have any deodorant on. <laughs>